Hello everyone, this is Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader, and I'm back with another video with Riker Kane Mustin, my grandson. Please hold your applause. Hope everyone's doing great tonight. We're back and we're going to talk about the TYT TH8600. A good friend of mine, his name is Doy Shipman, KE5MCA, and said, hey, I'm going to buy a new radio. I'll have it shipped straight to you so you can review it. And I'm like, am on, y'all. <laughs> can you do that? I'm on, y'all. Yeah, good job, buddy. Thank you all for joining me again this evening. And I hope that you get something good out of this video. I just want everybody to know I'm about to start a series of videos for All Star. How to build an All Star note from beginning to end. We're going to start with the very basics. Uh, for those of you out there that don't know the ins and outs of doing an SSH into your All Star node or into any device for that matter, SSH is a secure shell. It's kind of picture it as kind of like a DOS box interface into your device so that you can set it up and then later on take care of some of the controls. It's actually pretty darn handy. At first I thought, you know, this is pretty rudimentary stuff, you know, in this day and age of graphical interfaces. And then the simplicity of it is perfect. It doesn't bog it down with a bunch of hoo-ha and SSHing in to a device is just more than enough to get it set up and get it running. It's not a bad deal. You can also do a WinSCP if you're on a Windows machine to access some of these features, but you have to SSH in to access the menu that's set up in the All-Star HamVoip software. But tonight we're going to take a look at this right here. Okay, like I said before, this is the TYT TH8600, and right here on the box it says dual band dual display, dual standby, 25 watt for VHF and 20 watt for UHF. It's IP67 waterproof optional. So maybe the waterproofing is optional? That's interesting. Five programmable function keys, which I'm assuming is uh, five of these keys that are on the front face, maybe on the microphone. I guess we'll find that out as we go along. It's a dual band, mini mobile radio, like we said, five programmable function keys and GPS optional. Hmm, I wonder if we got that option or not. I didn't ask Mr. Shipman that or not, but let's look on the tag here. Dual band transceiver, power UH or power VHF 25 watts, UHF 20 watts. Frequencies 144 to 148 and 420 to 450 does not mention GPS but that there is an IP67 sticker on here so I'm assuming we have that option you can hear in the background the Dixie Traders net going on up there in Knoxville on the side here if you can see that and the, the focus may be off thank you camera it says free software and driver that H and it gives you an, a uh, a website address to access, and it looks like it ends also with a DOC, so you can get some documentation maybe. Sticker on the side says TYT TH8600 Dual Band Mini Amateur Two Way Radio with CAB. Not sure what they're going for there. Nonetheless, we're going to take it, open it up, and take a look inside. Oh. We've got another TYT Electronics Company Limited verification sticker. Set it past Q QC, which is quality to control to you and me. Okay, and here's the, the beautiful, lovely manual. And it's written in English. Another plus. We're gaining points left and right. This is going to be another mini mobile like I have in the, of the QYT that uh, I've been reviewing here lately as well. Looks like we've got software and a programming cable. Another huge plus. It's got a USB-B port on the radio side. USB-A on the computer side. 
So, let's take a look. Well, let's... Ooh, TYT. Not a bad-looking microphone. Microphone is a six... No, three, four... Yeah, it's a six... Six-pin female uh, barrel port. Isn't that something? Got the back shell, the threaded back shell. Goes into the radio, so it seals it up nice and well. There's a nice rubber gasket there to keep the water out. That microphone feels good in the hand. Really good. I like that. Interesting. It's got an A and B button, VFO, call, menu, and function. God bless you, Riker. God bless you. And here's the radio itself. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Interesting. Buttons feel good. Oh, yeah. Rotating knob is good and tight. Oh, yeah. Feels real good. Now, what this is... Oh, our microphone port. Of course it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See what we got there? Nice dust cover. Rubber cap goes on it. Pretty good and tight. We got a TYT Q code on the side. Product and forgery inquiry system. Oh, I'm sorry. It says product anti-forgery inquiry system. Scan the Q code for verification. I wonder how that works. High temperature service. I'm sorry. High temperature surface. Do not touch after long term use. What I think they're trying to say here is if you keep this up for a long time, don't touch it. It's going to be warm. Let's go around to the back. We've got the uh, wow, this is not the standard T connector, but this power connector is IP67 rated to lock into place and rubber gasket to seal, keep moisture out. I like that. We've got a port in the back that was that has to be uh, opened up with a screwdriver. We've got the USB port here and a headphone jack there. That's underneath this screw. So, and a cooling fan and a PL259 antenna jack hookup. Sticker on the top says TYT dual band transceiver model TH 8600, power VHF 25 watts, UHF 20 watts, and the frequencies are just as I stated before. Doesn't mention anything about the GPS, so this may not be a GPS model. I do not know. But I tell you what, it feels good and solid in the hand. So let's get a screwdriver out and let's open up this. All right. see what we got there we go that's pretty good right there behind this little lever door that that screw was holding down is a, a the USB B port and the microphone jack and they've got good rubber seal around them so you don't get to the bottom of it it does it in the end so I tell you what let's hook this baby up see what she looks like with the power on how about that Riker yeah you want to look at it with the power on okay let's do that this is the the TYT TH8600 dual band display dual standby radio box and I wanted you to be able to get a better look at this free software and driver. They give you a nice download link there. I haven't tried it yet, but I will. And a little bit of a description there about, I believe this was an Amazon order. But here on the front is TYT's description 
of the dual band transceiver, the Model TH 8600, my eyes, she ain't so good. Nonetheless, it gives you the frequency spread there and the wattage output for each band. Okay, and the nice IP67 rating sticker, which I have determined in the little bit of time that I've looked at this radio, it is because, well, it's their version of it anyway. I'm no authority on this, but right here on the power plug, there's a nice rubber gasket around the power plug and it locks. Oops, if I put it in right. It locks into place. Now, don't get me wrong. It's Chinese janky. And you get what they give you. But, at the end of the day, I'm sure there is some version of water suppression, water invasion suppression <laughs> into this connector. You've got a nice uh, inline uh, fuse here that's allegedly watertight very difficult to get off of there I think I'll just leave it alone for now rated input voltage is 3 point or 13.8 volts DC plus or minus 15 percent says it and then you've got uh, the nice little TYT uh, decal on the side I'm not sure the camera will be able to decipher that just yet someday I'll have a better camera that will actually focus on things Here's the sticker on top of the radio. Pretty much everything it says on the box. Same model, same wattage, output per band, same frequency spreads, and the serial number. And included in this package is a nice set of uh, fuses, in case you need them. They are 15 watt fuses, uh, microphone clip, microphone hanger an assortment of bolts and or screws if you need to mount your mounting plate anywhere there'll be two side bolts on each side and they slot through here just like an Alenco configuration pretty darn handy it's actually pretty strong and then you've got the TYT programming cable and the TYT programming software that we're about to try to load and then you got the manual which you know it's not always so bad an idea what you're looking at a nifty looking little thing and we're fixing to power it up and see how well it reacts but I'll tell you what huh, I, I get impressed easily I guess I don't know but I like the way a good microphone feels in the hand because if I don't like the microphone I don't want to use the radio that's just the way I am but this one's got a nice oval shape to it it's got it's a semi slick plastic it's not horrible it does have an IP67 rating sticker on the back. And I'm assuming that's because it's got this nice threaded barrel connector with a rubber gasket. It goes onto the radio to prevent any uh, moisture incursion. And the screw holes for the jack, I mean, the screw holes for the mic microphone are plugged with rubber plugs in four places. So I'm thinking, yeah, they went to a little trouble anyway to make this IP67 rated I mean that microphone feels solid in the hand 10-4 good buddy kick her back one time come on come on just makes you want to talk on it nonetheless let's get this thing uh, assorted hooked up and powered up and let's see what it sounds like <laughs> 